Hey guys, my name is Jeff, and today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Toyota Prius. Now, the brand new Prius features new, aggressive, but beautiful styling, along with a huge horsepower increase from the previous generations. All of that comes from the fact that the Prius is in the bit of a sales slump. Unfortunately, the car has not exceeded 100,000 units since 2017, and even then, most of the cars have even been sold to the likes of Uber. You see them as Uber cars, or just sort of considerably fallen out of hand. But Toyota is aiming to change that. This brand new car, obviously features brand new styling inspired by coupes and sports cars, I'd like to think the LC500, and it even features that huge horsepower bump to make it more competitive. So prices for the brand new Prius start around $27,000, which makes it relatively competitive and pretty cheap, but this car that we'll be looking at today is actually a limited model, so it does have some other upgrades and some other options, as I'll touch as we go on throughout this, um, which brings this car in particular to thirty six five, dollars and that includes even delivery, uh, processing, and transportation fees and all of that. So we'll go through through some of the other details, talk about what you can skip, what you can look at, and just the general features of the brand new Toyota Prius. Now, earlier I mentioned that the Prius has been in a bit of a sales slump. Now, unfortunately, sales have declined. The best years for the Prius were actually around 2012, 2013, and it since has not really done so well. It's kind of been on decline ever since, but this brand new generation has a lot to offer, but it's in a fairly hyper-competitive space. When the Prius first came out, it was a very unique hybrid option. It was almost as if the Tesla Model S was when it came out, in the sense that it was a very very trendy vehicle. You were seeing celebrities driving them. You were seeing them featured in all sorts of places. Everybody wanted to be the first to buy a Toyota Prius, for example. Now, since then, we've seen a huge increase in how many hybrid vehicles and electric vehicles, for that matter, are now on the road that the Prius just doesn't feel as special as it used to. But thanks to the new styling on this vehicle and even the added horsepower increase, we'll see how that fares. Now, in this video, I will, of course, be going over the exterior. We'll talk about the interior. We'll talk about the powertrain. And of course, we'll take it for a drive. So first things first, let's talk about the exterior of the brand new Toyota Prius. This is a fantastic looking car. It's still a four door. We can see it's very swept back. It still kind of has that egg shape, which of course is ideal for aerodynamics. But one of my favorite parts about the car is kind of when you look at the side profile, you can see this lower vent, which really jumps up and you can see the whole, how it follows the body line through to the car is fairly swoopy. And then as we come to the rear, we can see we've even got some fender bulges in the rear, something that would normally be reserved for coupes or sports cars, and I'd like to think that this car in particular has been heavily inspired by the Lexus LC500 for some of the other aggressive stylings. Now let's go through up front and see some of the changes as well. So we have a Toyota badge here, which actually doesn't feature the backing or the bluing. It's a relatively simple badge, and it, they've really gone out of their way to make sure that that doesn't stand out, which is kind of interesting, but I'll touch more on that later as they do more to try and push for the Prius logos more than the Toyota logos. In the front, what's interesting, this is actually a press car, but you can see it's even got the license plate mounts up front, but it doesn't need it for where it's based out of as a Texas plate manufacturer car. As we go through, you can see some of our other parking sensors. We have some really cool DRLs highlighted here, including the fact that these are, of course, you know, sort of LED headlights. And then this being a premium model does have the larger 19 inch wheels as well. So nothing crazy there. You can see we have relatively small brakes, not a performance car or anything crazy. This one's on Michelin tires, but pretty cool vehicle nonetheless and just pretty basic. As we go here, you can see a very flat windshield, and that obviously helps with some of the ease of visibility, but you can have some head clearance issues that I'll get into in the interior if you're a little bit too tall for the Toyota Prius, but they still manage to have a back seat that's fairly fittable in there as well. You can see the door handles look fairly standard up front, but of course, keyless entry, but the minute you look at the back, you can see that we even have some actual electric door poppers here, including one for your mechanical release, should you need that. And there's some other cool details. You can see our fill up there. You can buy the Prius Prime if you want your electric plug-in hybrid. And then as we come to the back, we see some more interesting details. So one of the interesting things about the back is the Toyota badge is almost hidden. So we talked about the front, how it's relatively hidden. It's even more hidden in the back. The first thing you notice is that this is actually a Prius. One of the first things you'll see when looking at the back of the car, which does stand out quite a bit, especially when you think about previous models, but it is still in fact a hatchback. This also being a premium model means that when you take a look at your Prius key, which says Prius in bigger letters than it does say Toyota, you actually have the automated lifting as well. So this is something that is particular to the higher trim models. It's not gonna be automated like this, and it also comes down as well 
This is specific to the limited models, so that's something to keep in mind. If that's a must-have feature for you, then you're going to have to spend some bigger money and go buy some of the higher models. But while we're taking a look at the exterior, there's also 15 Easter eggs that Toyota has included into the Toyota Prius, so that way you can hunt around with your Nerf Prius and not get bored. So for example, here it even says Prius in the glass, and then also behind the license plate is another Easter egg. But if we come back to the front real fast, we can see a few more Easter eggs. We actually have a Prius up here in the window glass, which is kind of a fun touch. And then of course, there's some other cool features you can see out here, like the added window heaters, which are available as well. So some of the cool bits, and I even wanna show you one more Easter egg on the exterior, which is gonna be right over here. It says Prius down there in the side of the bumper, but that's gonna be hard to see, especially as your car gets dirty. So let's a quick look at the exterior. Let's go ahead and hop in the interior and see what's going on in there. Okay, so now we're on the inside of the brand new Toyota Prius, and we have some other additions and add-ons that are, of course, part of the premium package, but we'll be taking a look at everything here in our limited Prius, but some of this is gonna remain the same throughout the car as well. So just going through some new bits. So of course, this steering wheel is new. Obviously, some of the gauge cluster setup and things are a little bit different from what you'll find in any other Toyota models, although some of it is now shared. Now, the interior of the Prius is, of course, a little bit cheap feeling, and a lot of that is, of course, to save weight. This car only weighs around 3,100 pounds in base trim, going up to around 3,200 pounds or so with the all-wheel drive packages. This also has the premium JBL Auto, which is not bad for a premium auto system, but it's also not great. You'd expect to get a little bit more for what you're getting for your money, but it's there if you want to drown out some of the sound. Because this car is so light, we have a lot of plastics and soft text material instead of leather um, that's going to be in the interior, including the steering wheel, which is normally a leather wrapped option on a lot of Toyotas and Lexuses. This is actually soft text as well, which is uh, Toyota sort of spill resistant uh, material that they put in a lot of their vehicles. So something to keep in mind there, but of course it all saves weight in the grand scheme of things and the radio system will help drown out all the additional road noise because there's also not a ton of sound bending in this car either. Now, as far as some interesting attributes, this new steering wheel, which is shared with some other models, has this front display, which rather than looking through, like it having it in this lower dash, it is above. Not quite a heads-up display, but kind of similar, and you can kind of function through a lot of your various bits there. Obviously, currently it's set to fuel economy, which is kind of what you would expect it to be, but you'll also notice that there's not much in the way of a gauge. You don't really even have digital gauges, so to speak. It just gives you your speed, shows you some of our Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 systems are all active on the car, our fuel, and then it'll of course show you your gas pedal acceleration, your drive mode, but nothing crazy. It of course will show you even your uh, gas directions and things like that, but it's not a crazy system. It doesn't show you a ton of information about the car itself, which is kind of interesting, but most of the people interested in this car won't need that extra information. And to that regard, it almost feels more like an electric car in here. Everything is purely functional the way you need it to be. In Toyota fashion, just about everything has a physical button, so you don't have to worry about navigating through pesky touchscreens to deal with everything. All of your ventilated and heated seats are just here by a touch of a button. If you want to adjust speed, temperature, whatever, that's all right here, including a power button and even access access to the panoramic cameras, which were part of our limited package here. Um, so we can even see what's around us at the moment, which is a pretty cool touch. Makes it easier for parking or to see how well you parked between the lines without getting out of the car. All sorts of goodies like that. I mentioned the front heated wiper spots there, which sit at the base of the windshield to defrost your wipers or even just defrost your windshield in general for those of you who live in cold places. And some other options as well, heated steering, um, some of the fog light buttons and auto headlights. And then of course, even the hatch release and a locking gas trunk uh, cap, which is never a bad thing. Not necessarily a requirement for anything, but you know. They also made it so that most of the things you'll use on a regular basis are what's immediately closest to you. For example, some of the odometer reset buttons are kind of hidden in the back here, but all of the stuff that you'll use regularly, driver controls, either your audio volume adjustment, you're talking to your Toyota, uh, some of the modes, and then the safety assist buttons to adjust your ranges, radar cruise control, um, some of your collision assist, all of that, of course, will be right here as well. So that's super nice because it makes it just that much easier to focus on driving when you don't have to worry about everything else that's going on. The Limited also has some of these seat memory positions, electronic adjustable seats in this case, and you even get the power adjustable mirrors and access to all of the other uh, window controls as well. Now let's get into some of the exciting bits, which has to do with some of the center console. So there's a couple different screen options, uh, this particular being the uh, bigger size, the seven uh, inch, I believe looks a little bit funky, but this is the larger one as part of the limited package, but the volume knobs on the far side, but you do have your adjustment here on the left side uh, for your manual adjustment, which is always nice. The screen itself, 
is pretty easy to use. It's relatively responsive. You get access to things like the energy flow. So you can see here, your battery charge is not that great right now, but you can see where everything's going based on when the engine's running and whatnot. And you can even manage some of the other vehicle alert trip information and control it like that. You can also message some of the uh, vehicle settings. Like if you wanted to, one of the things you could do is go into the vehicle customization, which would allow you to mess with some of the lights and even custom drive modes if you wanted to mess with some of the powertrain stuff yourself. Um, to make your own custom drive mode, didn't like any of the particular ones that are available on the vehicle. So that's a quick look at that. Now, getting into this, we have our power button, our hazards, and of course, all of our HVAC systems here. But below, we do have some more chargers, um, including just sort of standard USB type C's and even an outlet in there, which is pretty nice. And then two cup holders with that and a little storage tray. But what Toyota wants you to see is if you actually lift this up, you can pull it out and in there is actually your little storage bin, which is kind of funny that it has uh, this hashtag uh, hidden compartment. So I don't know what Toyota marketing thought they were doing there, how clever they thought they were doing, but that's in there nonetheless. Kind of a funny joke, uh, hashtag hidden compartment. We'll see a lot more hashtags as we go throughout, including if we take a look at the glove box over here, we can even see hashtag glove box. This cool little line I forgot to mention is actually an LED line and we have this like pseudo carbon fiber material uh, that sits just below it there. And then as we go through, this is sort of a, a standard Prius shifter. If you're familiar with the Prius, you'll be right at home with this. You'll even find this on a variety of other Toyota and Lexus models. This is becoming relatively available, pretty easy to use. If you're not, it's you'll quickly get used to it. Down here, we have our drive mode. So of course we can function through custom, which we talked a little bit about earlier, sport, normal, eco, which will of course manage your uh, HVAC system. And also it'll manage some of your driving tendency as well, trying to keep that below the power bar when accelerating for better fuel economy. You can remove your traction control, not that that's something you'd ever need to do in a Prius. And then you have your EV mode, which means it'll run in silent only, assuming the battery has enough charge in it uh, for a very limited range and very low speed. So not really practical to use a full-time EV mode, but it's there in case you need it and are worried about somehow waking up your neighbors with your extremely quiet Prius. We do have some more storage back here as well with more USB Type-C compartments, which is pretty cool. But if we actually lift up this felt, we have hashtag console box down there as well. So kind of fun Toyota just being creative with some of the other things that are going on there. And we do have a wireless charger as well. So with that, let's go hop in the back and see what the back space of the Prius looks like. Okay, so now I'm sitting in the back seat of the Toyota Prius and I'm about six foot for reference. Um, I actually have plenty of leg room and the driver's seat is currently set up for me at six foot. And there's a, a good amount of headroom in the front actually, despite how low the roof line looks, you'd be surprised how tall you could probably fit somebody up to six two, even six three in there fairly comfortably. And if you even had the added recesses that comes with the added roof for the moon roof, which you have two manual adjustable moon roofs, let's say one for the rear and then one for the front as well. So those are both there available to sort of open up the cabin space just a little bit more if you need that just a little bit extra room. Now back here, there's nothing overly exciting. The biggest disappointment is the lack of actual vents. So you're not going to get any air back here unless it's directed from the upfront cabin, which isn't ideal. You do get heated seats in this limited model, which is a nice addition if you live somewhere cold and you want to make sure your rear passengers are of course going to be warm. That is something that they have back here as well, along with two more USB type C charger. So not too bad. You can of course fold these seats down. You can see we have the back hatch there, but just some things to keep in mind, not necessarily the greatest. We're going to be carrying adults regularly. Like I said, people do use these for Ubers though here and there, but it fits and you'll definitely have no problem fitting kids in the back. Um, so if you wanted to do family road trips in your Prius, that's certainly something that shouldn't be a problem in the back seat. So that's a quick look. Okay. Let's take a look at the powertrain in our Toyota Prius. So the Toyota Prius has a couple different drivetrain options, but the main powertrain stays the same. It's a two liter high hybrid four cylinder, of course, paired with electric motors, but there is a front wheel drive version and an all wheel drive version, which both fuel economy and power numbers will actually vary based on which version you decide to go with. The base front wheel drive version will of course get a 194 horsepower engine with 139 pound feet of torque, and that can get 57 miles per gallon in its best situation. That's the combined number. And then should you go to the other option, you get 196 horsepower if you go with the all wheel drive version, which places an electric motor on the rear axle and essentially only uses it as an on demand all-wheel drive system, meaning that the all-wheel drive will only kick in when accelerating from a stop and when it needs it 
in traction instances or quick acceleration. Now, so you also get some added performance benefits on that, but you're going to suffer at fuel economy getting 52 miles per gallon um, in that instance, but you still get pretty fantastic fuel economy, all things considered, if you're going to be using this car to commute, which is good to know. As far as just general performance, 0 to 60 for the front wheel drive is going to be 7.2 seconds, and it's going to be 7 seconds flat for the all wheel drive. Obviously, that rear uh, electric motor will kick up on startup to get you going a little bit faster, and so that's where you see some of the differences. So, some things to keep in mind there. Now, even though I mentioned all those fuel economies where numbers were well into the 50s, my experience here, I've been averaging around 50, uh, around 43 miles per gallon. Um, so not ideal, but I have had the AC and ventilated seats on full blast, which will take away from some of that. And I've been keeping the car in normal, not eco mode, probably not driving the best of, I, that I could be in order to save more gas. So that's up to you. Your experience may vary there. Just something to keep in mind while you're doing your test drive. You may want to reset it and just kind of check how it's going. But still fantastic fuel economy nonetheless, which of course is the main reason you're going to be buying this car in the first place. So what's it like to drive the Toyota Prius? So first of all, you will expect some rubber banding. This is a CVT transmission, but everything is really smooth. The steering is fairly light, fairly heavily boosted power steering, but that means it's pretty much gonna require no effort on your half. And of course, the way the gauge is sort of set up, it's pretty easy to see, but it helps to have the steering wheel pretty low to make sure that you can see over the steering wheel and get access to your important gauges to make sure you're not speeding, but also getting good fuel economy, things of that nature. Now, on top of that, this car isn't overly fast, even though it does feature uh, the biggest horsepower bump ever in the Prius uh, history. It's still not that fast of a car. The previous car did 0 to 16 around 9 seconds. It helps to have the added horsepower, but this car is not a rocket ship, and you might still notice some sluggishness if you're going uphill, especially with four people in the car. So if you need it to be able to do extremely hilly things, something to consider and make sure that you can even test it on that test drive, make sure it works for your living situation. Um, you do get a fair bit amount of road noise. As I mentioned earlier, the interior unfortunately does not have a ton of sound deadening. One of the things they do to save weight and of course get better fuel economy, which is the main reason you buy the car at the end of the day. So all important things to keep in mind. It's not a luxury car on the inside by any means. It drives exactly like you would expect a Prius to drive. And really at the end of the day, it's just here to get good gas mileage, but they do offer more amenities than let's say the Toyota Corolla, for example. So if you like the Toyota Corolla hybrid, but maybe it doesn't offer enough for you, the Prius gets some better options as far as getting more technology in the car. And that may be the difference for you considering the Prius starts at $27,000. But again, some of those even features could be locked behind the limited package, which then puts you well into the 30s for the car as well. So all things to consider as far as what you need from a car when you're deciding to buy a hybrid, for example. But the car looks absolutely fantastic. Driving wise, it's fine. It's not great or amazing or anything like that, but it's going to get you from A to B, no problem. You get, of course, that Toyota badge which means reliability these days and uh, decent prices and parts should be relatively cheap skinny tires small brakes all of that should be relatively affordable just for driving the car so all good things in that nature but that's just a quick look at it. I don't want to talk about too much of the driving portions because this car isn't really a sports car or anything crazy. And at the end of the day, you need to go to the dealer and test drive it for yourself to make sure that the seats are comfortable for you. They're fine with me, even though they're, like I said, they're not anything totally premium. They are just that Toyota soft text material that you'll find a lot of other vehicles, but you need to just make sure it's a right fit for you and make sure it checks those boxes. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, could hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Comment down below if you've ordered a pre or if you're considering buying one, I'm more than happy to answer any questions if I can help. And of course, get subscribed for more content like this in the future. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.